Hey everyone, and welcome back to our ultrasound physics lessons. So in our last video, we talked about the characteristics of sound waves. Now we're going to take the next step in our journey by exploring the concept of pulsed waves and how they're used in ultrasound technology. Let's dive in. So first, we're going to discuss continuous waves versus pulsed waves. See, continuous waves emit a constant stream of sound, meaning that the sound is always transmitting. Since continuous wave sound is always transmitting, there's never a moment where it's listening or receiving anything back. Let's use an example to understand this. So let's imagine that you're having a heated argument with your significant other. If the argument is constant and one-sided, where you're always speaking and never taking a moment to listen, it becomes impossible to reach any resolution. Just like in continuous wave ultrasound, where the sound is always transmitting, but never pauses to listen for echoes. Without that listening phase, there's no chance to receive feedback or gather information. So, continuous wave ultrasounds, much like a one-sided argument, can't lead to any meaningful conclusions or create detailed anatomical images. Now, let's flip the script and look at pulse waves. Imagine instead of a constant argument, you and your significant other take turns speaking and listening. You send out your thoughts, listen to their response, and then respond accordingly. This back and forth exchange allows for understanding and resolution. Similarly, in pulse wave ultrasound, the system sends out short bursts of sound, like when we speak, and then pauses to receive echoes, like when we listen. This allows for the creation of detailed images, much like how effective communication leads to understanding and agreement. And in this chapter, we'll explore the principles behind pulse wave ultrasound and its importance in clinical practice. Now, there are a few different parameters in which we use to describe pulse waves. Let's get into the concept of pulse repetition frequency. Pulse repetition frequency, or PRF, is a fundamental parameter in pulsed wave ultrasound. PRF refers to the rate at which ultrasound pulses are emitted and typically measured in units of hertz. Think of PRF as the heart of the ultrasound system, determining how frequently the ultrasound transducer emits pulses into the body. Now remember in our last chapter, we discussed frequency and its relationship to penetration. As a recap, lower frequencies were better for penetration, whereas higher frequencies were optimal for imaging more shallow structures. Well, a similar concept applies for PRF. PRF is inversely related to depth. As you recall, an inverse relationship is like a seesaw, where when one variable goes up, the other one goes down. But when we image at increased depths, the PRF is decreased. And in contrast, when we image at shallow depths, the PRF is increased. Now, let's discuss pulse repetition period, or PRP. This is simply the time from the beginning of one pulse to the beginning of the next. Just like period is measured in units of time, PRP is also measured in units of time, like seconds or microseconds. Now here's a key point. PRP and PRF are inversely related. When the PRP is longer, the PRF is lower. And when PRP is shorter, the PRF is higher. Let's break this down. Now let's imagine that both of these scenarios represent the number of pulses transmitted in one second. Now remember, the PRP is the time from the beginning of one pulse to the beginning of the next. See, when the ultrasound system is emitting more pulses per second, this means that there is a shorter period of time between each pulse. Therefore, the PRP is shorter because the system is transmitting pulses more frequently. Now in contrast, when the PRF is lower, it means that the ultrasound system is emitting fewer pulses per second, and this is going to result in a longer PRP because the system is transmitting pulses less frequently. Now another thing to note is that PRP is directly related to the depth of imaging. When imaging deep, the PRP is long, and when imaging shallow, the PRP is short. Let's think of it like this. When you're diving deep into imaging, searching for hidden treasures buried deeper than the body, you need more time to wait for echoes to return from those distant depths. And more time means a longer PRP. But when you're just skimming the surface, capturing images of shallow structures near the skin surface, you can afford to quicken the pace. Less depth 
means less time for the echoes to return, meaning a shorter PRP. Now, we're going to discuss pulse duration. And pulse duration simply refers to the time it takes for one ultrasound pulse to occur. Basically, it's the time from the start of a pulse to the end of it. Now, pulse duration plays a critical role in determining the clarity and precision of our ultrasound images, particularly in the axial direction. Let's touch on that for a second. So, axial resolution is the ability to distinguish between two structures that lie along the direction of the ultrasound beam, and this is greatly influenced by pulse duration. See, shorter pulses are better for axial resolution. When the ultrasound system emits a shorter pulse, it's able to precisely locate those echoes that are returning back, making images sharper and more defined. Now, on the other hand, longer pulses may degrade axial resolution because there's a high chance that the returning echoes will overlap. And this can lead to the blurring of structures that are located along the direction of the ultrasound beam, making it difficult to distinguish the true details. We'll talk more about axial resolution in another video, but the key point to note here is that shorter pulses are better for axial resolution and therefore they're just better for accurate imaging. Now let's shed some light on spatial pulse length or SPL. SPL simply refers to the length of an ultrasound pulse as it travels to the body and typically measured in units of distance, like millimeters. Now, SPL plays an important role in determining the sharpness and clarity of ultrasound images, particularly along the axial direction as well. Now, just like with pulse duration, shorter SPL values lead to better axial resolution. And on the other hand, longer SPL values result in reduced axial resolution, making it harder to distinguish between closely spaced structures. It's important to note that although pulse duration and spatial pulse length appear to be similar, they're two different things. Pulse duration refers to the time from the start of a pulse to the end of it, but spatial pulse length refers to the actual distance or length of that pulse. Finally, let's discuss duty factor. Now, duty factor is represented as a dimensionless quantity, giving us insight into the fraction of time during which ultrasound pulses are actively transmitted by the system. Think of duty factor as a percentage that indicates how much time the ultrasound system spends on and actively transmitting. In clinical imaging, duty factor typically ranges from 0.2% to 0.5%, representing a very small fraction of time during which ultrasound is emitted. Now remember I said before that with pulse waves, which forms the basis of diagnostic imaging, the system goes through periods of transmitting and receiving. And in clinical imaging, the duty factor is actually very low. And that's because the ultrasound system spends way more time receiving than it does actually transmitting. Now, in contrast, with continuous wave ultrasound, the duty factor is 100%. Remember, with continuous wave ultrasound, the system is constantly emitting sound waves without any interruption. So, the duty factor is going to be 100%. So a key point to note is that duty factor is influenced by the depth of imaging. Now, when we're imaging shallow structures, such as superficial tissues close to the skin surface, the ultrasound beam doesn't need to penetrate deeply. And as a result, the system can transmit pulses more frequently, which is a high PRF, and with a shorter PRP allowing for more time to actively transmit ultrasound. This increased time that the system is transmitting pulses results in a higher duty factor. Conversely, when we're imaging deeper structures, such as organs or structures located further beneath the skin surface, the ultrasound beam must travel through more tissue to reach the desired depth. In this case, the system is transmitting pulses less frequently, which is a lower PRF, and needs to allow for longer listening periods between pulses, which is a longer PRP, in order to receive echoes from deeper structures. And as a result, the transmission time decreases, leading to a lower duty factor. And that wraps up our discussion on pulse waves in ultrasound imaging. Throughout this chapter, we've explored key concepts such as PRP, PRF, pulse duration, SPL, and duty factor, each playing a crucial role in shaping the characteristics of pulse wave ultrasound.
Now stay tuned for the next chapter, where we'll discuss the interaction of sound and media. Until then, keep learning and keep scanning. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. If you like this content and you feel that it's helping you with your studies, then please make sure to like and comment on this video and subscribe to my channel. See you guys next time.